Before you select a brush to use in your painting, I want you to think about how that choice defines the way that you should be constructing your illustration. Depending on what tool you are choosing, you're not just dealing with what is an efficient way to paint, the way you express yourself and the tone you establish with your tools can either help or hinder you to deliver that message in the most powerful way possible, so that your illustrations can leave a lasting impact on your viewers. In this video, I want to help you make a more informed decision on what tool to use in your painting and what features in your brush you should pay attention to. I will also show you how this information can be applied to a painting in practice, so that you can create your own stories and hopefully after this video you won't look at your brush menu the same way ever again. I want you to take a close look at how this process starts, because the way I'm painting these first brush strokes is not the way that I will be painting the last ones, and that's because of this technique. In the beginning, I thought I wanted to mix line art with these thin black lines with bright colorful brush strokes. And to make those brush strokes for painting, I'm using this wet color brush. You can use this technique with any brush by the way, but it's important to look at why I'm messing up the beginning here so badly in this instance. This brush is what I would call chunky. If we look at the profile of a single brush stroke, it has this sort of lumpy look to it, and this is entirely intentional in the design of this brush. The edges are frayed with watercolor textures. This texture and the way it's not sticking to one clean line moves it toward this category of high character brushes. I wouldn't call this brush a high character brush, but it's definitely not without its own personality either. So it's on a spectrum and it's somewhere around here. All brushes that you are already using are either easy to use and have little to no character, like monoline brush or the default round brush. On the opposite end of this spectrum, the brushes that have a very strong character to them, they leave a lot more textured mark on your canvas and require specific situations where they are optimal to use. Pastel on wood brush, for example, is not an easy brush to use. You will see that character in your final painting no matter how you use it. I only use this brush when I'm feeling especially brave and I don't recommend it to beginners, because it can feel very wild and unpredictable when you're using it. Now I want to be very clear that I don't think that either kind of tool that I'm talking about here is better or worse. High character brushes can be interesting, they can be very powerful in certain situations, but simple and low character brushes are also very valuable. I personally love the default round brush and I think any style can be created with that one single brush, so it's an excellent tool. However, with these high character brushes, you don't want to ignore what that brush stroke profile is like, because using it with intent and design can either enhance your message or in the worst case, make it really hard to read. It's possible to paint with any brush the way that you are used to, however, in some cases that might mean that you're working against the tool instead of working with it. For example, I could make a cell shaded illustration with this wet colored brush, but it would be an uphill battle for no extra benefit. Another approach that in my opinion makes way more sense is to look at the brush stroke profile and use that to inform yourself how it can be utilized to enhance your story and the message and the mood of your illustration. And this is what I decided to do with this illustration. Now let's put this theory into practice and see how a message of an illustration can be enhanced by utilizing the character of a brush. As I was filling my line art lines with color by using this brush, I noticed that this interesting looking chunky watercolor textured edge was getting lost behind the lines. If my goal was simply to do a cell shaded illustration, I would be better off using a cell brush to get it done faster. That way I would automatically get that clean look with lines without any extra effort. However, I liked the warm handmade look that this brush gave to my shade. It seemed to resonate with the message of my illustration. At this point, I also have now more information about the story of this piece as it's slowly emerging from this mess of lines and color blobs. 
I'm painting a pumpkin lounge, where pumpkins can just relax and feel safe from the horrors of Halloween. This is a completely knife-free zone, where they don't have to be afraid of anyone coming to carve them into lanterns. To get that warm, inviting mood across in colors, I'm using mostly different hues of orange for this piece. Like in my previous character design video, I'm using relative color to create an illusion of different hues. I have to say that doing this with orange revealed a real weak spot for me when it comes to color, and this was much more tricky than using only yellow for me. Not really the topic of this video, but if you want to level up your color skills, limiting your palette like this is a really efficient and fast way to get better at color, especially a color that you are having trouble with. Now what used to be just a box in isometric perspective is slowly turning into this nice little cozy place, and I'm looking for any and all opportunities to enhance that mood, because especially here, mood is the story. So when I saw these edges of wet color brush, I thought that this brush is not only a good way to tell this story, but it can enhance the way that it is told. But for that to happen, I need to give the brush strokes space. I need them to be seen, they can't be just a distraction, they need to be an important part of how I construct this illustration. I decided to remove the line art completely. This allows for those edges that have that texture to be actually seen. For the edges to be visible enough, I also used more value contrast between shapes to bring out the imperfections of my brush strokes. To get that contrast, I also used 100% opacity for the entire illustration. With low opacity, it's easier to get that softer look, but that can be also done with your color and shape design. One more important area where I was also losing all of those edges was in blending the colors on surfaces. Because there's a lot going on in this illustration, I decided to get rid of all blending wherever it was possible, and instead I divided my local colors, lights and shadows into these own shapes. They're almost like shell shaded pools of color with their own edges, but unlike shell shading, those edges aren't clean, they're textured, slightly unpredictable, and I gave them room to be that way. The way I painted also expanded into my layer structure as well. Normally, in this type of a piece, I tend to keep all elements on their own layers until the very last minute. But in this case, I started merging all the finished components down into the main building layer as soon as they were done. And there's a lot of overlap here. I wanted this piece to feel like this mini diorama that you're peeking into to get a small glimpse of what the life of pumpkins is really like. This way of working forced me into fixing small gaps of color by dabbing small dots of paint between spaces that I had overlooked earlier, because there weren't any layers that I could paint behind. I also avoided using eraser, and instead tried to fix most of my own mistakes by painting over them, instead of erasing them. All of these little tweaks of how I was painting, they just added to the physicality of the paint, and eventually I was starting to get that warm tone in the way the story is told. Tone is really hard to convey with just words, but if I had to try, the tone of this piece is it's like a memory of children's book illustrations for me, the way that they felt like when I was a child. Not how they look to me now, but the memory of how they felt to me back then. So this is how you can use this information in your own art right now. Open your brush palette. If you are not using the default round brush in your current painting, ask yourself, what is the right tone to tell this story that I am conveying in this illustration? And then just pick the right instrument that will enhance the story in the way that you want it to be told. If your brush has the kind of character that needs space to be seen, ask yourself what is the right kind of method to give space in my artwork for this brush to be seen and to communicate that tone in the final piece. If I had just continued painting this like any other of my digital paintings, I would have lost that unique message this idea was trying to tell me. By listening to what our art wants to say, we can make better decisions in telling that story, not just so that others can understand it, but so that the method conveys that feeling of the message as well. And that way, our viewers can also feel the story of our illustrations. 
please don't stab any pumpkins. I'm Mikko and I'll see you in the next one.